It's going to be a power pack 90 minutes. Uh, and we begin with conversational sales and Mr. Josh Gogola. Thanks for uh, being here and for sharing this time here with our customers, Josh. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. It's exciting to get all of this new product that we've launched over the last month into our customers' hands and show you all what we've been working on. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to show you exactly what we've been doing. Let's take a look. All right. Oh, that was a lot. All right. So I'll start the slideshow here. Um, Nick introduced me, but for anyone else, uh, my name is Josh Blagola. I'm a product manager at Drift here, and I've been here for about two years, and I'm the lead for our conversational sales group. And today I'm going to talk to you about a lot of the different tools we've been shipping, specifically going to nail down on some of the different use cases or flows that Drift is most commonly used for, which include prospecting, inbound sales flows, and for deal management. And then we'll have time for discussion and open questions, as Nick mentioned, towards the end. So I want to start with just a list of the different products and features that we deliver. And this isn't all of them. This is just the hit, like high list of all the things that we have here. So for Drift, for our sales persona, the different sellers, when they get into Drift, there's many, many things that we offer. And in the last month, we had our biggest release ever, which included multiple new releases on the sales side as well. So we have a new updated version of our prospecting flows, which you'll see shortly, a new tool called Deal Room, which you'll also get to see in today's demo. The Drift mobile app has been updated, so it's no longer just an extension of our chat functionality, but it now also has prospecting flows available with it as well. And we've also made significant updates to all of our account contact and visitor pages to make it easier for you to do the work that you need to do within the sales flow. So I'm going to go into each of these common use cases at a high level, and then what we're going to do is jump into a broader live demo that jumps through what a potential use case might look like in a real day-to-day -day for a rep. So we start with Drift for prospecting. And we all know that prospecting is hard, hard work. It can take many, many attempts, sometimes on average up to 20 or more events to actually connect yourself with a buyer. And before you do that, you know it really feels like you're not efficient as a rep when you're going through this. You're getting a lot of no's, you're getting a lot of people who aren't interested. So how do we as Drift help make you a rep more effective? Well, we do a lot to help you stand out in terms of relevance, and the actual communication you're able to provide for your customers. And what prospecting does within Drift is give you that relevant high insight data so you can see exactly what kind of information is going to be key to that account, that prospect, what they might be researching, where their intent lies, so that you can really hone in and write a hyper-personalized message that's going to be as effective as possible. That makes you more productive as a rep, and it also improves the way people respond. When they see these personalized conversations hit them, they're much more likely to get in there. And that makes sure that we've provided the right place and the right channel for engagement because Drift provides avenues through our Drift video tool, which lets you hit them with a personalized video. Chat, obviously, for inbound, which we'll go over shortly. You can use email. We give you links through LinkedIn, and we also have integrations with Outreach and SalesLoft, which are common ways people use to do their outreach. So we want to make sure we offer the right engagement in the right place every single time. Outside of prospecting, what most people know Drift for is our inbound sales solutions, especially Drift Chat. But we're not just Drift Chat there, right? We also, through our notifications on our ABM platform and through the Drift Video product, can provide interesting ways for your prospects to view your content, to get engaged with you as a salesperson, and then turn that into an opportunity for you as a rep to jump on top of that and proactively engage them in a way that they're more likely to respond. By showing, we've seen with um, this kind of proactive engagement, users are four times more likely to get that next step because customers see that you're engaging with that video, they're engaging with this content, and you're essentially getting them when they're at their level of highest intent. So you don't have to worry about trying to catch them later and remember what they may have been excited about in that moment. They're still excited and you can really hook off of that to drive an excess, a successful sales pitch. If it's not available and you can't do it in real time, we also always have our calendaring capabilities which help you show up on reps calendars. So, our bots never take a lunch break, never sleep, never take vacation, right? They're always there booking meetings for you when needed so that if a customer comes in with high intent, they don't have to wait for you or wait for the next day. They can book time on your calendar using preset settings that you care about to make sure that they get the right slot every time and that we're always hitting them at the right time. Last thing here is deal management. This is a new motion for Drift, but it's something that we're starting to break into with a new tool we call Deal Room. 
So more stakeholders get involved in deals than ever before. And as we see bigger and bigger deals and bigger and bigger sets of stakeholders, we're also talking longer sales cycles in general. On top of that, people in the industry at large are expecting their uh, software purchase experience to be much more like an Amazon experience. Even when you're talking about big company software purchases, everybody really wants that one click review, set up and buy sort of process without having to think too much about what they're doing, right? Honestly, if people could buy software from a vending machine, I bet they'd do it. So what Drift is really trying to do is provide like we talked about, we've got the right information at the right time. Now we need to make sure that we have the right place. So Deal Room is a digital collaboration space for buyers and sellers where you can share conversations, documents, tasks, and help move forward and align on the actual steps in the deal so that you can have a more transparent and less frictionable process that leads to faster deals with less touches that help the customer feel more confident in their ultimate purchase. So Drift is doing a lot in all of these different areas. And while it's great to see it on slides, what I do want to show is actually what this could look like live and in person. So I've opened up Drift here and I've gone to my visitors tab. I've tried to see exactly what kind of accounts, let's say I'm an account executive trying to prioritize my week, are actually engaging. So I don't have too many accounts, but we've seen 11 accounts recently engaged in the last week. And out of that, Cybrary, which is an account here in this demo, uh, is showing really high engagement actually, where you can see there's lots of different information where they may be going. So I wanna jump into my feed and see more specifically here on the activity, what kind of activity that may be. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the same filters. I can now customize this view with a saved filter for high intent leads from high intent accounts. This is something that's been shared with my whole org and now jumping through it, I can look and look at all the different site visits and different things that are going for me in terms of my accounts. Looks like here, cybrary has been super, super engaged. So I just want to do another step to see, okay, what specifically have they been looking at and which key prospects are actually engaging with us so I can see if there's any contacts we care about. And first thing I see is we have a senior director for sales who's jumped, who is active on our site, looking at certification and some of our processes. Wow, that seems like someone who's really interested. Now, normally, I would go, okay, let's search this person on LinkedIn or send them an email, or I could even use the outreach or sales off integrations to physically put them on a cadence and start to get that relationship building. But this is one where with Cybrae, let's say we've actually got a deal going on for a while. We've gotten a little bit of back and forth and we can have that hosted here. So what we do is on every account page now, you'll also see a deal group. So if I click on that, you'll get brought to a collection space. And as I mentioned earlier in the slides, this is really a place for collaboration between buyers and sellers. It's like a personalized landing page that's secured to just the two of you so you can understand what's happening. If I look here, this was initially created when that first intro meeting got booked. So let's say they booked a meeting with me. We had that when we actually held the meeting through Drift Video, our integration with Zoom and all the other different pieces there. We'll actually record that data back to your CRM and then also put that recording directly in the room here. We constantly hear from buyers that the most frustrating thing for them in a deal is repeating themselves and going back for information that they already had. And then they have to repeat it back to their team because they're now responsible for essentially being an internal salesperson that's driving the same point you just drove with them. So by consolidating all of this information in a single space, we can give them an easy point of reference that helps drive that interaction forward. So the, the onus isn't totally on you as a sales rep. You can have your buyer also become a better champion because they're utilizing the reference space here instead of dealing with things that got lost in emails or maybe they weren't on the CC thread and the wrong people were there. And as that view set comes up and more emails happen, more meetings happen, we'll continue to record those different pieces as they come even if it's chats, meetings, recordings, that all gets consolidated in this view here. And then as you forward this to other people on your team, so let's say I forward this to a solutions consultant who's going to be doing a demo so they can have the context on the handoff of understanding what this account cares about and what they've been doing, they can join as part of the team here. Or let's say Mary on the Cyberry team here wants to forward this to some of the different people in her org so that she can say, all right, I'm not the decision maker, but I know who is. I want them to see this demo or look at this specific piece that we were talking about pricing here in the room. They can easily get the link to this and you share it just like you would a Google Doc or anything like that. You get an easy link, you can copy that and then put that right into an email or a chat or a text message to somebody and make sure that they get access to this room directly. 
easy, simple, and it's secure because we do checks on the background to make sure that that person belongs to either the seller's or buyer's team. So you don't have to be worried about this getting shared with a competitor or giving away sensitive information. It's all secured right here. So that's a quick look at some of the different capabilities that are going to be in here from the sales and outbound motion. Uh, we talked about chat and some of the new things that are coming there. You'll see more probably on the services side when Viet gets in, but I do wanna just mention quickly that we've got a really streamlined and updated interface here. And we've been adding a lot of technology behind the ability to create sections so that your inbound agents can be as effective as possible when they're answering chats. So you can set up any set of filters to make sure that you have the right types of conversations getting to the right people. And then once it does, again, all of that activity is going to be stored directly in our prospector or our outbound motions. So you can see, okay, for any specific account, who's engaging? Are they online now? Should I jump on them and try to start a chat now if they're actively online? Easily run any of the different plays from your sales motion throughout the cycle and then keep that up over and over again as you have more new engagements and new intent. So that is the start for me. Uh, that was the primary demo. I'm open to questions and hopefully if there's any other questions, I'm happy to uh, jump back into the demo and explain anything in more detail. Excellent, excellent look under the hood there at what the latest of what Drift has to offer for uh, those of our customers who use Drift with their sales teams. And really awesome to see, Josh. A couple questions for you that popped up. Uh, number one was, we've shipped some awesome features on the Drift platform for sellers. What uh, some of our customers wanted to know is, does the things that you showed like Prospector, like Deal Rooms, are those separate kind of products that customers need to buy and integrate and plug in or are those or are those kind of new features on existing platforms how's the packaging of of and accessing those features work yeah that is absolutely a great question um so the way we sell seats today is actually as a platform what you get with drift is a seat and that seat whether it's a sales seat a marketing seat or the service seat that you're going to see with viet later in this demo today you have access to any of the capabilities that are there and your admin sets up which of those seats and roles you have access to. So it is really, you buy the license and as many seats as you need and you get any of the access to all of the functionality. Some of the things we talk about here today, so everything I showed you is on our premium plans. Um, there will be other features that may be on our advanced or enterprise plans, depending on the tier there. Uh, but for at least everything here, that's premium plus on the new plans. All right. So, so long as our customers have, you know, the current premium plus plan, everything you've shown them should be in it. It's really just a matter of the tier of the drift platform customers are buying nowadays, not about having to purchase into discrete products that you're showing. Exactly. Them. Excellent. And speaking of access, there was another question from Lisa. Great questions here. Lisa was uh, that you showed the deal room and that prospects external points of contact for our customers can access that. Do they need to have a drift login? Is there some sort of like opting in feature that they're, that the external contacts might need to be able to access that deal room besides being in the right sort of domain and company that you're trying to share it with? Can you just tell us how the access might work externally from a US? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So with the deal room, especially on the buyer side, we do not require any kind of seat licensing for you to access the deal room. The important thing to us is that the right people there for the deal get the information they need to continue progressing that forward, especially on the buyer side. For salespeople, uh, there will be some limited functionality, but everybody who wants to view a room who has the correct domain should be able to get in there. So that's something where we're going to continue to evolve the functionality there. And as we add more features there, deal room again is something that's early for us. It's a brand new feature. It's still in a sort of beta, but it's it's really exciting to move into this deal management phase. Um, you're gonna see a lot more there and we'll make sure that everybody has kind of access to that deal moving forward. All right, so it sounds like absolutely, so long as the domain and their email address and that type of thing matches up with, with the account that you wanted to share it with, they should have no problem with the access. Right. Okay, great. Um, there was a little housekeeping question about, will we get a recording of this afterwards? Absolutely, folks. That is that is absolutely on the table. Uh, so, uh, Josh, while, while we still have you, because we've got a few minutes left here, so folks, please feel free, whether you want to use the Q&A tab or you would like to use the uh, just the chat tab, we're keeping our eye on that here. Questions for product manager Josh Gagol about conversational sales right now. So, Josh, how does all this work with Salesforce? You talked about some integrations with the CRM. Anything you want to sort of double click on with our customers about how this integrates with one of the most popular CRMs out there. Absolutely. So we make sure that we sell, you know, a better together story, especially with a lot of these different backend systems, especially Salesforce, where we know that your reps are spending a ton of their time 
especially your managers are tracking and making sure all that different events, data conversations, interactions, that really is your home for a lot of that. So Drift recognizes that and we have a full-blown integration. We are listed on the exchange there for them. Um, so we make sure that any of the events, so let's say there's a video that you post and then you send to a customer, those views and the interaction there, there's an integration to make sure that that gets reward, recorded as events and conversations within your CRM. If they book a meeting, we make sure we record that event to your CRM. If they have a chat, we do the same. There will be some small things here and there that may not totally move over, um, but it really depends on if you're able to set up your integration correctly. Um, so I would advise if you have problems or if you want these things to different work with your Salesforce, um, you would need to just basically talk to your CSM or talk to your account team and ask, how can I get this set up to work for me? And we'll work with you on how that's going to go. Excellent, Josh. What you're telling us is, yes, absolutely, this works with Salesforce. It passes through the usually the, the data points that most AEs or reps would want. Most importantly, they can go into Drift if they want to dive a little bit deeper. And it sounds like you're continually to enhance uh, that integration and what's kind of gets synced uh, back over, over time. An additional point of clarification, a level deeper from Lisa, thank you, was what about account so she was actually asking for the deal room. What about account managers? So you've got this deal room functionality, Lisa and her company, they're like, we want our, we want our AEs to be using this, but maybe those AEs don't need to be, at least at this time, fully unleashed to all the functionalities and stuff with Drift. I know there's been some role-based role -based access controls. She's kind of asking how can we give AEs just limited access, let's say, to some of these new features like the deal room? Any just thoughts on the use case for that and how that might work uh, if, if they want to unleash this with their AEs to try? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a seat will be required for full function in the deal room, but we don't want to completely limit access. You will still be able to see, excuse me, if you're given the link for a deal room, the content that's there, you just may not be able to interact with it if you don't have a drift seat. So for an a account manager or somebody who's looking to have kind of an ongoing view of any interaction, that'll be available there. Okay, great. So it sounds like they're going to need a seat if they want to regularly be able to pull up and utilize these features, but how much that they utilize of the Drift platform is really up to them, their role, and, and what they need to get value out of that, that seat and that okay. access. Okay, great. And I want to reiterate, because I'm sure customers are interested here, that if you have any questions as to how, what Josh and the other product marketers, I mean, product managers rather, will show you, go to your CSM, go to your Drift account team. They're well briefed on all this material. They've been working hand in glove with the product managers here as we went to roll out. So if you, if you want to find out, can this work for me? Does this work for me? Uh, how can I get this set up properly with my teams in the right way? Your Drift CSMs, your account teams here are standing by and happy to answer any specific questions in regards to your use case, for sure. So just know that for, uh, for sure. Josh, other questions that came our way while we still have you. Got a few more minutes to go with you before we move to conversational AI with Masuma Zakir coming up in a few minutes. Uh, you told us about how this works with the CRM. We saw in Prospector some filtering, some pretty robust, pretty awesome filtering capabilities. And I also noticed, first of all, Prospector got a bit of a facelift, didn't it? Because yeah, I've it seen did. certain customers looked at this and they went, is that new? Like, do I have that? We're like, yeah, that's Prospector, right? That's, a, that's the same Prospector people know and love, just with a really great enhanced UI and some additional functionality, yeah? Exactly, yeah, we've done a lot to really build relevance into the day and life of what we can for reps. So for any piece of our product, we really wanna bring the key information front and center. And honestly, we live in a world of scrolling these days where people expect if they wanna see something, they just gotta scroll a little bit further, right? They just gotta mm -hmm. look down the table, they gotta look back in the history. So we give them that ability to look back through as much content as they desire to make sure they get the information they can. Could you tell us about the filtering? Because I know, especially with our more sophisticated customers who might have certain geos and things like that, is it possible to break accounts down by region? How sort of the, the geo uh, functionality filtering working in Prospector and otherwise? Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of the great points where we work with your Salesforce or CRM integration to really bring out all of the different color and flavor you can around the contact or account attributes that you're storing. So any information Drift can glean from that. Uh, if you set your integration up properly, we can use those fields to actually filter down what we see and consider relevant within the page today. So I showed a little bit in there. We can go through as far as like what Drift does, like we have custom filters that are only high intent accounts that are in a specific stage in our Salesforce integration. And then we further limit it. So our EMEA team only cares about EMEA customers and our North American team only cares about those. So we can use any of those attributes as long as they're defined within your CRM or the integration points with Drift. 
to actually use those throughout the product. So that filtering can be used on the engagement view if you want to see exactly which accounts are engaged for any rep or in the activity views to see, okay, what kind of activity has been happening. So it's across the app and something that should be pretty powerful if you can get it set up. Oh, sweet. And what I love that you also pointed out there, Josh, is that we're sort of drinking our own champagne here. We're, we're eating our own dog food. Pick your, pick your metaphor. But it seems that you're, you're getting a lot of feedback of us trying these features out ourselves. Is that mm -hmm. a big part of what you folks do is you kind of want to roll it out to, to scratch our own itch, so to speak? And how's it working for our own sellers? Is that part of what you folks look for as product managers and features is in addition to customer feedback? Yeah, absolutely. We always make sure that we kind of, you know, org one, as we call it, or our internal users are always our first customer, making sure that we understand the needs of real salespeople day to day, and then we can resolve them. So we always kind of try things out ourselves, we make sure it works. And we're never going to just like ship something blindly out to the market and make sure, you know, we want to see things be effective and show that they are valuable ways to drive better sales cycles and faster sales cycles so that we can make sure our customers then get the best out of that too. So Drift is one of the best users of Drift, hopefully, and we can use that to help educate you as well. So if you have any questions, we're always happy to give you best practices, pointers, or tips on how to improve your setup as well. There you have it, folks. We try to be our own best customer and kind of like go through the minefield first if we can on how, how best to spin up these features that uh, we, we, we rely on for our own sales and marketing and uh, service teams. Awesome, Josh. We're in our final minute here, folks. If you have any immediate questions you want to ask directly of the product manager for conversational sales, Josh Glagola here. Otherwise, in just a minute, we're about to go to uh, product manager Masuma Sakir to talk about conversational AI. So last chance here if you want to be able to ask a live question. Otherwise, you can go to your Drift CSM, your Drift account team. They're standing by to answer any specific questions as to how this might apply to your portal, your organization. Uh, while we wait on that, Josh, last point to just drive home, how can people get access to this? Can we just make clear if somebody saw something very interesting they want for their sales teams here, uh, what do they need to do to get access? Is something they have to buy net new or, or where would they go? Absolutely. So for anybody who's on the newer plans, like we mentioned in that first question, this is a platform. We do sell everything available to you on the seat. Even if you don't see it today, that's a great question. Just talk to your admin about what features you have access to. If you have access to the right features, then just go try them out and look yourself. There could be some barriers. Again, we do need a little bit of information to get started. So go ahead and get your Salesforce account integration set up, talk to your admin and make sure that everything's there that you need to do your job. And then it's very easy to jump in and just try these features out yourself. They're available in the nav bar, just click and go. Excellent, Josh. As I've already seen from the way you follow up tactically with these types of things and in our internal Slack, you folks will be listening as well, right? So any any feedback, they can kind of channel that through their CSM, through their account managers. You're very much in sync with those folks as, as feedback and questions and, and use cases come through. Hi, everyone. I am Masuma, and I'm excited to talk to you about conversational AI today. Um, here at Drift, we say every relationship, every deal, every solution begins with a conversation. Basically, everything begins with a conversation, and I'm excited to show you how AI can help you make your conversations even better. So as I mentioned, I'm Masuma, Senior Staff Product Manager here at Drift in our AI group. As part of today's agenda, I'm going to be reviewing conversational AI insights in the Kano search with you all today, followed by conversational AI chatbots in our Drift platform. I'm going to be going through slides initially, and then I will be doing a live in-product demo. So starting with conversational AI insights. Conversational AI insights help you learn the voice of your customer by allowing AI recognizing topics that come across all your conversations with bots and agents and surfaces the most common topics every week. You can read those conversations per topic to better understand your customers and to learn how you can better serve them across your content. And then you also have the capability to save filters and get alerted when new conversations come up for the AI topics um, of your choice. Our conversational AI chatbots takes us even a step further. Our conversational AI chatbots help you provide a better buyer experience. Now, how do we do that? You can now add AI to any playbook to answer open text questions from your site visitors 24 seven. This improves sales efficiency because now you can route high intent topics to reps and then you can also deflect support questions. And last but not least, visibility and control. 
you get 75 out of the box AI topics with the ability to edit unlimited custom topics. Um, our AI technology also detects new topics to train your bot on. And you can also customize playbook flows based on your AI recognized topics. Now, what does that look like in product? Again, I'm going to take you through a few slides and then show you a live demo. Our AI and playbooks can be turned on in any playbook, as I mentioned, by simply turning on the toggle in the top left hand side. Once you turn on the toggle, your playbook will be listening for all the AI topics that you have managed in your AI topic library. You can also use those AI topics to branch in leading to different conversation paths. So some common use cases here include a high intent path where a site visitor is asking about pricing requests and demo requests leading to booking a meeting with sales to a medium intent flow such as a nurture flow where the site visitor is looking for more information on your company and you can provide them with some knowledge based resources or you can also have a low intent flow or often referred to as a support flow where you can direct those questions to a help ticket creation, just to give you some examples at a high level. How are those AI topics managed, you asked? Well, you have access to an AI topic center. Again, this is all available in the product, so you have visibility into how your AI model is trained and managed. So within the topic center, we have those 75 out of the box base topics available for all customers to use. And then you have the ability to create custom topics for anything that's not covered by our base topics. We have the ability to create custom variable responses. So this means when you're creating a custom AI topic, let's say you're creating one for discounts. Anytime a site visitor asks for a discount, you can give them a default resp response. But if you need a varied response, so for example, if the site visitor is asking about a discount for healthcare versus asking for a student discount, you can vary those responses within one AI topic. This helps with managing all your AI related responses that are similar in one AI topic instead of having to create numerous different ones. A lot of times we get asked, how do I know which custom AI topics to create? Well, we have a discovery tab that surfaces the voice of the customer with all the utterances that the bot did not respond to, that the bot did not recognize. So then you can use that actual conversational data to create your custom topics with. And once you create those custom topics, you can train your topic on demand. This means anytime you update the training data for a custom topic or create a new custom topic, once you train that model, you can have it live under an hour and be triggered in your actual live conversations with your site visitors. And last but not least, we have AI Convo Review, where you have the ability to not just view those AI insights that I started with in Convo Review, but now when you actually filter for conversations which have AI enabled, again, that toggle enabled that I had showed you, you can see how your site visitors open text responses are classified by our bot. So in this example, if you look to the right hand side, the site visitor asked, can I ship? And this was recognized as an AI topic for shipping inquiries and the appropriate AI topic response was provided. So again, this provides visibility to, for you to see how your AI conversations are performing. Now I'm going to go ahead and move into a product demo and show you some of these features uh, live in our product. So starting with conversational AI insights, uh, if you navigate to this magnifying glass within our Drift app, this will bring you to our converse, conversation search. This is available to all Premium Plus customers. And as you can see, we have AI recognized topics surfaced here in product. The most commonly used products are surfaced every week. So for Drift specifically, we got, I want the support team and I want billing support come up the most this past week. If I click into the topic, I can actually review those conversations to see how the conversation is flowing, what the customer is asking, what the site visitor is asking, and how our bot is responding. And it also pulls up our agent conversations as well. So you'll see some conversations with the Drift bot and some with that agent as well. So again, we have the ability to not just view it on the homepage of Conversation Search, but you have the ability to also filter for any AI topics that are interest of you. So for example, if I want to know how many 
customers asked about pricing information, I can go ahead and apply this filter and see all the conversations that have come up for pricing under this specific AI topic. I'm going to be coming back to conversation search at the end of the demo after I talk a little bit more about how AI is enabled in our playbooks and how our AI topics are managed in our topic library. So starting with our playbooks, um, for the purposes of this demo, I've created this playbook to help, uh, help you understand how our playbook builder works with conversational AI enabled. So to add AI to any playbook, you simply toggle on this button on the top left hand side. And once you do that, this playbook will be listening for open text responses from the site visitor and will classify them against your AI topic library. In order for the site visitor to be able to uh, reply with open text responses, all the questions where you want AI to fire, you simply open up that question, navigate to responses, and make sure you have it enabled so that visitor can respond with both buttons or text. Again, being able to respond with text provides our cap the AI capability to listen for those open text responses, classifying them against your AI topic library. Once you have that enabled, you are able to branch on different AI topics. So as I had mentioned before, some of the common use cases are the, that high intent flow, which is referred to as a sales flow for many of our customers, a medium intent flow as a nurture flow, and a low intent flow as a support flow. You can actually build those out according to how you want your bot to handle those conversations. So under the hook question in our playbook, we have these four conversation paths. So for anything that's um, branched on an AI topic is represented by this flash logo, and then the purple represents a button, which means when this bot is live, it's going to say, hi, how can I help you today? The site visitor will have an option to click on one of these three buttons or respond with open text. If they respond with open text, the bot will classify it under one of these four conversation paths. So if the site visitor is asking a general browsing question or asking for a discount or promo promotion, we will navigate them to a help article lookup where we provide resources on information for what they're looking for. If they're asking a support related question, so billing support, general support, or if they click on I need a support button, we're going to navigate them to a help ticket creation. And if they have a general pricing request or a pricing request button, then they're going to be navigated to book a meeting with sales. Anything that doesn't fall under these three categories for open text responses will go down the line of all other responses, and the bot will ask them a follow-up question. To add the AI topics to the branch of your choice, you simply click on this plus here within the playbook filter, click on AI topic, and you can add any other AI topic, which makes sense. So for example, I'm going to add demo request to my high intent flow for a general pricing request, because that's what I want the request to route to for this specific conversation path. Now, how do we manage our AI topic libraries, right? Let's talk a little bit about that. So if I go back to our Drift instance and I go back to our homepage, when we navigate to playbooks, we now have AI topics under library. Once you navigate to your AI topics, you will be shown a list of all of your AI topics in your AI library. We have two types of AI topics here. We have base topics, again, those 75 pre-trained out of the box topics that are available to all customers, which are represented by this flash logo. If I filter on examples, it's gonna bring up all of my base topics. To use a base topic, you simply open up the base topic. It's already pre-trained. All you need to do is add a response in your brand voice. We also have tips in here for what constitutes making a good response. And you are ready to go. Once you have a response added here and you have your playbook set up like the way I showed you earlier with the toggle on and the question node to accept open text responses, anytime an open text response meets this bot, this um, AI topic, the bot will respond in your brand language the way you have the response configured here. We also have the ability to add conditional responses, as I mentioned. So for example, under, well, this is probably not the best example, but if I go back to, um, let's see, I want a competitive advantage. If I want to add a conditional response here where I tell the bot, you know, this is my default response for um, responding to 
competitive advantage. But if someone mentions a specific competitor and I want to give them a different answer, I can add that specific competitor here as a keyword and then mention and then put in my response in my brand language for that specific scenario. This helps us create maintainability within our AI topic for us to be able to manage those related scenarios within one AI topic and not have to create multiple AI topics for varying scenarios. So that's one example of how a, uh, a variable response can be utilized. Now, those are the base topics. Once you have your responses configured, you're ready to go. But what happens if you have a topic that your our base topics don't cover? We provide the capability to create a topic. You simply name your topic, um, add your bot response, and then add the different ways people are talking about this topic. And that's going to be used as training examples to train this AI topic. Now, a common question we get is, how do I know what to train my bot on? So this is where our discovery tab comes into play. Our discovery tab will surface the voice of the customer, and it's going to display all these utterances that our bot did not respond to, or it also includes utterances from agent conversations, from live conversations. So what this does is it's recommendations of new custom topics that you can create. So these topic cards will group together related utterances from, all, from your existing conversational data and let you know that you can create a topic. It'll let you edit the name of the suggestion, and then it'll let you review the related examples and pick the ones that are relevant to you. So you select which ones are relevant and you have the ability to create a custom topic with those examples or you can add it to an existing example. Now, if something is not relevant, you have the option to dismiss it. And if you scroll all the way down after the topic cards, we also have those single line utterances which couldn't be grouped together because they weren't similar enough. So in the table below here, we have the single line open text response from the visitor, the actual conversation it was stated in, and it highlights where in the conversation it happened. And you have the ability to add it to a custom topic as a top match or another topic if you feel it's more appropriate. Or you can also create a topic, a brand new topic with this. So that is how you can create your custom topics. Now, once a custom topic is created, let's talk a little bit about the training process. So I'm going to go back to my test environment here and update a custom topic live so you can see what the training for that is like. So I'm going to navigate to my AI topics and I'm going to open um, a custom topic here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add additional training data to it because I now know there are other ways people talk about this topic and I wanna increase my topic strength. So as you can see here, we have a topic strength that tells you, you should start with a minimum of 10. We recommend 25 or more utterances. So as you start building out topics, you can start with the minimal that you have available, but continue to add to it as conversations come up. You can do this manually like I'm doing here or use the discovery tab like I showed you earlier. I'm just going to add in a test utterance, uh, test example here, and then click on update and close. Once I click on update and close, you can see um, the label there is unpublished changes. That means that this AI topic has not been trained with the new training data that I entered until I click on publish all changes. Once I do that, the label will be updated to changes in progress. And then it tells me my changes will be live in under an hour. And once that's done, the label will be updated to published. So this provides you the capability of making changes live in production based on real conversational data coming in. And last but not least, I did want to come back to our conversational search, as I mentioned. Um, so just to remind everyone, our conversational search provides AI insights on the homepage. Um, it provides those AI recognized topics on a weekly basis, but you also have the capability to dig a little deeper here for those AI enabled conversations that we just set up. So once your playbook is live, your AI topic is set up and you want to show, you want to see how your conversations are performing. You have the capability to search for playbook with AI enabled to be true. And you can see all the conversations that are taking place in those playbooks. Um, 
for the purpose of the demo, I pulled up two conversations that I thought would be a good example for everyone to see. Within that search, I pulled up a few that have open text responses from the site visitor. And as you can see, you can, you can see as a customer how that open text response was classified by our bot. So when the site visitor said, hi, I face an issue with Drift, it got classified as I want the support team. And then the appropriate response that was, tr that was um, configured in our AI topic library is shown. Now we also have instances where the bot may not recognize the open text response. So over here, um, the site visitor said technology, but we did not recognize this topic. As I mentioned earlier, you can use these responses to further strengthen your AI library by going back to your topic library and adding in these open text responses. Again, this can be done manually, or you can wait for this open text response to show up on the discovery tab, which is also updated on a weekly basis to update your AI topics on a weekly cadence. So if I come back to our presentation, this brings me to the end of the demo, but I did want to end with a customer quote. Um, we like we like AI open text capabilities because it lets us learn what our customers and prospects are asking and then edit and optimize our flow and content accordingly. Being able to pinpoint questions is priceless. This is Lindsay from SAP Concur. And with that, it brings me to the end of my demo. And I would love to answer any questions that you may all have. What an exciting demo there from uh, conversational AI product manager, Masuma Zakir. And Masuma, we ha do have a number of questions that came in from that great demo. I mean, first of all, it's just great to see that we have branching logic and open text responses possible right there within the tool. So customers who are looking to embrace AI do not have to choose one or the other, kind of get the best of both worlds for their users, huh? Exactly. Those are the two most common use cases, Nick. If I didn't uh, elaborate on it enough, having open text responses so your site visitors can get a response from your bot 24 seven, and then creating those different conversation paths to help support your deflection and routing goals. So yes, definitely. And it's great. It's great how easy you folks uh, have made it from a UI and a user perspective. Uh, but the majority of the questions that came in, Masuma, is still like AI is a little bit intimidating. Folks want to kind of do it right, follow whatever best practices we have available. So the questions we got from folks like Nandy and Michelle were kind of like, hey, can we get a copy of the playbook you just showed us? You know, people were excited to see what you were so, sort of showing them as an example. And they were like, I sort of just want that. If it, and so I don't know if you can talk about what we might provide in terms of templates, best practices, like Nandy and Michelle were asking, could you either go over or tell us if it will be available like a high intent sort of AI based uh, playbook versus a medium intent or maybe a low intent support deflection playbook? Uh, are we able to see things like that? Will they be available uh, for customers who are trying to do this right for the first time? Yes, that's a great question. Um, we actually do have an AI template. I know I didn't get to touch upon it on my demo, but when you go ahead and click on uh, create a new chatbot, you have the ability to create um, with our new, one of our new AI templates. And um, it has those use cases that I highlighted. So we have a high intent flow, a median intent flow, and a low intent flow. The great thing about that template is you can utilize it as it is, or you can modify it. It's a template, right? So if you only want to you're only focused on a high intent and low intent, you can delete that medium intent flow. You can utilize it as needed. And if I can touch upon customers getting started with CAI, conversational AI, it is available to our enterprise orgs, enterprise customers. Um, however, we do provide professional services and AI conversational designers to work with our customers to truly understand your specific use cases with AI that you're looking to solve for, understand how your conversations need to route. Um, some of our customers have more simplistic playbook building needs versus some may have more complex cases that they want to build out. And our, we have conversational designers who will work with you to complete that on your behalf. So you can get started with our professional services, with our AI CDs. And what's great about this tool is it's self-serve. As you saw, right, I went into product. These are the same. Um, uh, capabilities and features that you will see available on tool. So while you have support, if you want to go in and review your conversations, update your AI library because you feel like you've noticed a utterance come up and you want to make sure it's done right then and there and you want to do it yourself, you have that capability. So the purpose of this new product line is to really to help with opening of visibility and mm -hmm. demystifying um, AI, but we also have support to help you get started, maintain it, manage it going forward. 
Yeah, it's super exciting. So there's three key points I think you you really drove home there, Masuma. Number one is, is that this is available for Drift customers who have the enterprise tier of the Drift platform. It's not something they have to buy as a net new line item. It's so long as you're on the Drift enterprise tier of the platform, current financial plans, uh, they should have access to this, right? Correct. And then exactly. the second thing you made clear, and I, hopefully the folks asking about this are excited, is that if you have that enterprise tier and they can talk to their CSMs about getting access to that if they don't have it, is that they'll be able to see when they do either update existing playbooks or make new ones, a number of templates that uh, we have made possible. So they, they basically don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can start with some good high intent, medium intent, low intent style. Yep, 100%. And our customers can definitely leverage their Drift Contact, their CSM, yes. for more information on how to leverage AI. If you want to see a more detailed demo, if you want to learn more about the product, we have our, you have we have your Drift Contacts to definitely reach out to, and I would highly recommend you do so. Right. And I know this wasn't a demo or a pitch for Drift's own professional services around AI, but I, you also clarified that that is something that customers have the option to, to add on to their enterprise plan. That is something they can add on at whatever sort of level they want to discuss with their CSM is appropriate for them, it sounds like. Right. right? That's exactly. at their discretion. Well, I love that too, because as you were walking through, going through the tabs, going through the insights, I'm feeling like a new sort of profession or discipline coming on here where you need to be a bit of a conversational analyst over time to start really, it's not, this is not necessarily uh, a set it and forget it as a best practice. This is something that they're gonna wanna continually use learning and machine learning from to continue to hone in on their customers and their prospects needs. Exactly. And as site visitors are asking about new topics, seasonal topics, for example, those are some items that you may not have covered in your AI library. So, um, you know, managing and maintaining is going to be an important part of that workflow. I agree. Yeah. We have a customer, Melanie, here saying, really nice demo. So excited about uh, AI being available. And Andrew here asks a very reasonable question, Andrew, right? I know that not everybody here is on the enterprise tier. It's exciting to see this functionality. So Andrew is asking, you know, could this type of functionality ever be available for other versions of Drip below enterprise or partially available? And I wondered, Masuma, if you could just underscore some AI functionality that we have rolled out um, in some of those other tiers of the product. That, that yeah, have. yeah, great question. And you know, the conversational AI insights that I stood that that first feature that I demoed is actually available for premium plus. So mm -hmm. what's great about the that AI powered search is it searches for AI topics across all of your conversations, not just the AI enabled playbooks that I showed you later on in the demo. So that's actually available to premium plus and it gives you a little taste of what's happening in your conversations, helps you discover the voice of your customer and it helps you, you know, kind of decipher those conversations to say, okay, if my site visitors are asking about these two topics that are coming up every week, how can I better serve them? Mm -hmm. So that is actually available for our premium plus, but the playbook building and the AI topic library, the actual conversational AI chatbot is available for enterprise. Okay, so so they will be able to use machine learning to be able to pull out trends and topics, which they'll kind of have to then act on and make branching logic playbooks or what have you, whatever they're going to do in their conversational strategy if they don't have enterprise. But if they have the enterprise queue, not only will they get those insights, but they'll have the ability to put the, the conversational topics and the, the AI-driven uh, bots right into the playbook. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Great. So uh, so people are excited about this. I can tell already our customers are thinking of how will this actually work for us in real life? And again, folks, we suggest that you talk with your CSM, you try it out. That's the, that's the best way to really know. But Lisa, ask a good question. If you can just let us know in your final minutes, like what does the bot do, let's say in this AI trained and you know, you've got the topics going and you're grooming them, if it doesn't recognize a topic? Can you give us a sense of what the kind of default experience is if, if this, this AI bot, even if it's been programmed with topics and stuff, hits something that doesn't have? A topic yeah. you recognize. Excellent, excellent question. This has come up with uh, many of our customers. We're actually working on a feature right now where if uh, the bot doesn't recognize an utterance, so we're, we're calling that a novel utterance, um, we're going to provide our customers the capability to provide a response like, sorry, I didn't understand. Do you want to try again? And almost create like a loop where they can go back to the original question and they could try rephrasing it. We don't have that in product yet, but that is something that we are actively working on right now. However, in today's um, world, it goes down the all other responses path. So if you remember that playbook builder that I showed you, um, if a bot comes across an open text response, it'll send it down the all other response and um, it goes down that specific conversation path. So our conversational designers and our customers who are using this self-serve are aware of that scenario. So they're building out the playbook with that in mind. However, again, like I mentioned, we are working on updating that capability to provide that unique experience for when the bot doesn't recognize something. 
Okay, good. So it sounds like no matter what, if there's if there's an open text topic that doesn't come up, our users can can anticipate that and say, if we don't recognize something, take them down this path. Correct. But, but also, you want to provide a bit more nuanced acknowledgement within the AI part of that playbook to maybe even say, hey, I don't know that yet. Could you tell me a bit more? Yeah, exactly. exactly. And excellent. I just I love the simplicity of how we have packaged up incredible power. Uh, for our uh, our customers here. Masuma, and our, our final minutes before we run the poll for, for folks' feedback, AI is such a huge, exciting, cutting-edge topic. How are you and your team, the product team you work with, thinking about AI and what to prioritize and what to do next? Anything you want to just give us a glimmer around the horizon, around the corner there of how, how you think about what's next? Yeah, well, our customers are the center of everything we do. We actively run customer research where we talk to customers live and understand what their use cases are for AI. What are they trying to solve for? And um, once we actually launch conversational AI, we've been meeting with customers to watch them use a product live in front of us so we can see if they get stuck, where they get stuck, where are those pain points, and how can we relieve those issues for our customers. The bot not re recognizing an utterance is something that has come up. So that's something that we are addressing with high priority right now. We basically base it off what our customers are telling us they want and looking to help them achieve their outcomes with AI. So try these features, use the features, note the feedback, bring it back to your CSM, to your account teams, to the support folks that they work with here at Drift, and, and you're aggregating, you're watching those things um, as the product rolls out here. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Folks, you've been hearing from Masuma Zakir working very hard on bringing conversational AI uh, for us mere marketing and sales and services mortals here. We get to harness it. Really exciting, Masuma, what you folks are doing. Last but certainly not least, we've got Mr. Viet Tran here, who's our product manager for our conversational service solution, that suite of products that we have on Drift to serve uh, those who service and support customers. And it's our newest uh, sort of solution and, and persona that we are serving. We're excited to have you here, Viet, to talk about what you and your team have shipped recently, what you will be shipping, and take a look under the hood with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you guys hear me? Fired just up, want to confirm. To roll. Yes. Can you hear me just to confirm? Hello, hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? I sure can. Can other folks okay. do? We'll do, we'll do the audio <laughs> do -si do Yep. Everybody's saying we're they good? can hear you loud and clear. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, so excited to be here. Very, very excited to be here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. One second. All right. Okay. So thank you so very much. My name is Viet Tran. I am the product manager for Drift, most specifically or, or very specifically on the conversational service platform, which is our uh, the third really the third pillar of what Drift has to offer. It. And, and the way that we think about conversational service is very much part of that customer journey and completing the customer journey from your prospect to your customer to um, you know existing customers that need help and service. And so we're very excited to be able to build on top of the Drift platform and really complete that customer journey. Um, and so today, what I want to do is, because it's really our first time demoing and showcasing our, our conversational service products in this kind of way, I, I do want to talk just really briefly about the user research that went behind how we inform our product strategy when we talk about conversational service. Uh, we'll also do a quick overview of what the conversational service tools are, as well as take a look at three different specific use cases um, of, of, of products uh, for the purpose of, of service workflows. So. Let's jump right into it. So when we talk about conversational service, it was critically important for us to work with our user research team, with our design team, with our product teams, with existing customers, prospects, and as well as just doing industry research to understand what is the best way or, or how do we build a really good and, um, and uh, a really good customer experience, right? Because it all comes down to what is that experience going to be like for uh, the users, right, that are going through the chat uh, support workflow um, the, through the chat channel for service. And so we found three very key insights that help inform our uh, our drift conversational service strategy. The first one of which is customers value their time, right? And a lot of these things, I think, when you think of it as a yeah, it's a no-brainer, but you you really have to kind of you know uh, take it in and 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 use that to inform what we build. So customers value their time. They value efficiency over pretty much everything else, right? Customers prefer self-service. Um, also, this is something that I think is very interesting because. Customers, if if provided the opportunity, four out of five customers will prefer self-serve tools because they can self-serve on their own terms. They can do it when they want to. And that's the beauty and the power of our chatbot technology, right? 
the chatbot is available 24 seven, your service team might not be. And so that's another benefit, right? And, and you're gonna be available around the, uh, around the clock for that. And then if needed, uh, they, the uh, customers will uh, will rely on a fallback to a human if needed. And then the third insight here is that customers don't like repeating themselves. So whatever type of experience that you can build that leans on context, on historical context, uh, to reduce that burden and reduce that effort that customers have to go through uh, by not making them repeat themselves, that is a much, uh, much uh, appreciated experience uh, for the customer. All right, so th those are just kind of three insights that we've really leaned in on when we talk about, uh, when we think about what we wanna build and where we're going uh, directionally with conversational service for Drift. Okay, so speaking about the specific tools and products that we've built in the last few quarters, um, when you think about the products for conversational service, I would really uh, encourage you to think of it holistically as these are things that are on top of the features that you just saw for both conversational sales as well as conversational AI, right? The 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 Drift live chat, all those things, um, conversational service really augments those capabilities for the purpose of service workflows. So that in mind, the things that we built and shipped specifically that are available right now are your Salesforce cases integration because many, many, many customers um, work within the Salesforce service cloud in terms of their service workflows. And so we wanna make sure that we're compatible because whatever we build, we don't want it to be a burden nor do we want it to make it a uh, nor nor do we want to complicate your service team's workflow so we want to work with it right and so Salesforce cases integration, we also have built uh, integrations for knowledge bases um, in, in order to be, uh, in order to deliver deflection. Uh, drift for deflection, which is the ability for your chatbot to help customers find those self self help those self help resources uh, in order to one make a really uh, make a better customer experience, and then two also decrease the burden on your service team so they can focus on the more complex challenges, right? And that also reduces the cost for service for your for your organizations as well. The third piece here is service KPIs and reporting. Obviously, Drift already has data. We have a data API. We've got conversational data, et cetera. But a lot of the data is uh, very sales or marketing centric. So we found like, hey, this is a amazing opportunity for us to build service first KPIs, service first data. And we really hone in on two very important KPIs, which are CSAT and deflection. And we'll dump, we'll go a little deeper into there uh, in a little bit as well. The fourth piece here is how do we look at conversations that flow into the Drift system and then build the tools and the features that just make the, the service agents lives better and easier, right? Because we don't, we want the tool to be something that you know, agents jump in and they're, they they find it a joy to use, they find it efficient, they find it works with their workflows and improves their workflows. And so we've looked at what are the specific tools we can build to make that agent experience better on a day-to-day -day basis as well, because they are very, very important to us as well. And in, in, in total, essentially the value that we're hoping to drive here is one, we wanna streamline and optimize your service team workflows. We wanna work with your team um, and we want to augment and make that better. The second one here is that we want to improve the customer or the buyer experience here through in-chat support. And then finally, the third piece here is that as a principle as possible for us, we want to provide data clarity and availability to service leaders so they can deliver results because it's very hard to improve your operation or deliver results if you don't know and you don't have the data that's that's needed to make those decisions, right? And so that's that's also very important for us. Let's jump into the next piece is here. So we're gonna talk about a very specific um, and very important workflow, um, which is integrating with Salesforce for Service Cloud and for the specific purpose of Salesforce cases. And Salesforce cases is really the backbone of the entire Salesforce Service Cloud infrastructure, um, which is their ticketing management system, as you as you likely know. And so we're very happy to say that we built on top of our existing Salesforce integrations, right? That Josh had mentioned briefly in the uh, the conversational sales portion of this of this demo. Uh, we built on top of that. We've added the cases. Uh, integration as well. What that means is that it's gonna there's a, there's a multitude of benefits. One for the customer because that's the most important persona we have here is your customer. For that for that customer, they can get self help help. They can get self help resources, but they can also file a ticket directly to the chat as well. And that's gonna funnel right into uh, the Salesforce uh, cases so that your team can follow up asynchronously when needed to help those customers out. The benefit for your team is that it improves efficiency. Right, so you're using a single chatbot that can do that can work for sales purposes as well as support purposes. And for your team, they can also create a Salesforce case directly from the uh, from the uh, the Drift application itself. And I'll show that later as well. 
The other benefit here is that the Salesforce, um, the, 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 the Drift transcript will also automatically be attached to the Salesforce case. And that's going to be um, a really uh, an improved uh, improved efficiency as well because uh, what we've seen is that some customer organizations will have one team that's dedicated to chat and a separate team that's dedicated to uh, to the asynchronous support through the ticket management systems. And so we want to be able to provide the context from the chat directly in the cases itself. And so that's just another benefit of this Salesforce cases integration with Drift. Here are just some quick screenshots as well, and I'll, I'll walk through in a little bit as well. But here you see that in the integrations tab, you have the cases tab that lets you configure your cases and the fields that you that that will be required for the uh, the case to be created. Um, in the uh, the playbook itself, the ticket creation skill will let you configure that as well. Uh, this is a view of the agent from the agent perspective and be able to see the cases and see the conversation as it's flowing through the through the chat, and then. Agents can also create a case if needed as well, if that's the part of the workflow. We really want to be flexible and uh, and work with any workflow, really, uh, for your service team. And then finally, here we have Salesforce cases integration here. You also see all open cases associated with that customer because a customer might be visiting your web website again um, through that chat channel, and they may already have existing cases, right? So we want to be able to follow up and see uh, what, what, they're, what they're inquiring about. So it's going to also display all open cases for that customer as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of keep going through here and then we can also uh, jump into some of the demo portions. Okay, so for the other the other big value proposition that conversational service also provides for our customer is deflection. And when, I, when, we, t when we talk about deflection, what we mean is uh, the chatbot's ability to point customers effectively to a self-help resource, a knowledge base, a community, um, any sort of material that can help them um, self-diagnose or self-help uh, and fix the issues, right? Because one, as, as we talked about with our customer insights, right? Customers prefer self-help four out of five times and they'll fall back on a human if needed, but this lets them solve their issues on their own terms and their own time um, whenever, whenever they need to, right? And so in order to deliver that, we have to lean in on our knowledge-based integrations as well as our chatbot or playbooks uh, uh, flexibility, right? And so what we've done here is that we've actually integrated with a number of different um, knowledge bases, uh, first of which is the Salesforce knowledge base. We also support Zendesk, WordPress, and Help Scout. And those are all different types of knowledge bases that you can integrate with. But for the purpose of the examples today, we're using Salesforce. Um, and the benefit here is that, again, for the customer, uh, you know, speed to resolution is very important. And the other, uh, and for the service team itself, it just introduces more efficiency, right? So you can build these experiences that lean on these integrations with the knowledge bases um, to answer your most commonly asked questions and leave the more complex issues for your agents to solve, right? The more human uh, required issues, your agents can handle those. And that also reduces the cost for your service centers and optimizes your agent utilization. This is an example here. We'll, we'll walk through those as well. And then the, the final piece here before we jump into the application is the, the KPIs piece, the reporting piece, right? And so, uh, I, you know, lots of teams say they're, they're, they're data centric and, and metrics driven. Um, but in my experience, working with uh, service leaders, working with service customers, they are extremely focused on the data, right? And so what we wanted to do was we want to take the opportunity here to build the reports that they need to better understand how their teams are performing, right? And so the, the areas that, that we focus on today are um, deflection and CSAT. And so deflection, again, is what is the rate of your support conversations? Uh, what is that rate looking at in order to uh, point customers to a self-help resource versus having to go to an agent, right? So that's that's what deflection is um, in this regard. And then CSAT is customer satisfaction rated one through five. And we'll go through examples there as well. Um, let me jump over to this here. Okay. All right. So this is our uh, demo instance here, and so just walking you through, and and I do this specifically because I think a lot of our uh, a lot of our service customers also are very hands in with our application. So I just want to show you know where you find all these things, and as you as you as you might know, we have this integrations tab that shows all the different platforms we that we've enabled, um, and within the Salesforce tab, you're going to see once you have the uh, the service um, functionalities, you're going to see the cases tab, 
as well as the knowledge base tab. And essentially here, you can configure which fields you want to be logged in or required for the Salesforce case. And this is gonna vary from customer to customer. Uh, right now, for the for, it's very simplistic. It's just your first name and your email. Um, and once you have that configured, you'll also go to your, you also see in your bots here, your bot configuration, you can point to which, uh, where your article lookup, your knowledge base integration, as well as your ticket creation. So we can support um, emails, we can support Zendesk, we support Salesforce, right? Um, in terms of what the customer experience is gonna look like, we have a fairly um, simple example here, but essentially, I'm gonna refresh this real quick. But for the purpose here. So you can structure your support conversations um, any way, which way you, you want, really. There's, there's, there's tremendous amounts of flexibility with routing, et cetera. And even when you saw Masuma's um, demo with conversational AI, uh, one, of the, one of the routes that, that she had on the screen was to create a ticket, right? And so this can be just another branching logic within that conversation, within that playbook. And here we have the help ticket creation skill which will let you create a Salesforce case through the chatbot itself. So this is gonna let the customer answer, um, I'm just gonna use my email here. And then the bot will ask you, for example, you know, what is the description of the issue or question, right? And, and we can say like, hey, just showing some friends. And so this is gonna use the response as a subject line for the Salesforce case, right? Um, and what that'll do on the back end is we've created a ticket now. And on the back end, if I refresh it here, you'll see this conversation flow through. And you'll also see the cases. <laughs> you see a lot of my cases here. <laughs> but you'll see the most recent case that I just spun up here, right? And then, uh, so this takes us to the agent view here. So like in the conversation, they can see this. Um, they'll, the agent can also create a case if needed. So I can just spin up a ticket line here uh, the agent can create a case. And if and when we close the conversation, this whole transcript will be associated with that corresponding case. It'll be associated with the most recent case, um, just for clarity there. And that's how you can lean on the Salesforce cases integration to help support your service workflow. Now, some customers will find that really valuable because they already operate in this kind of, uh, in that workflow where you have to have to creation. If you don't have to do uh, if, if your service workflow doesn't really lean on ticket creation, uh, nor do you want to, some customers don't want to, they just want to really focus on deflection, that is where, that is where um, the integrations with the knowledge base is critical, right? So you're going to be able to point to these resources. So in this case, we have the knowledge base here for Salesforce. Again, we support other knowledge bases too, but you can then point to a knowledge base and configure your bot to leverage that skill as well. So I'm using the Salesforce knowledge base here. I'm gonna go back to this conversation here. And the, ben and the reason why you want to use your knowledge base integration is because by hooking up your playbooks into the knowledge base, you can actually start to pipe articles directly into the chatbot versus just pointing customers to you know, a portal, right? So it'll improve the experience. So this is um, a fairly simplistic demo again, but uh, you know, th this will be tailored obviously for your business in terms of look and feel, in terms of uh, what the design is gonna look like for the customer. But in this case, um, by, by leveraging the knowledge base integration, we can pull the article directly as shown here into the chatbot itself, which will improve that speed to resolution, right? So you don't have to point customers to a really um, you know, generic portal where they have to look it up again, right? And so that's just another example of how uh, Drift's uh, built uh, more robust functionality within the chatbot to deliver deflection for customers too. Um, and some customers have asked me, you know, like where, how do I even get started with deflection? Um, I think the the most the 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 coolest thing is we have a general understanding of what customers are looking for, right? You you probably have a good sense already of what are most frequently commonly asked questions are, and so we can build uh, we can build the playbook uh, experiences around that, and then hook up the knowledge bases uh, to tailor to that, and then you can answer you know lots of questions that way. That will reduce that burden on your service team. Okay. And then I'm going to move over now to 
the next piece here, which is reporting and data, right? Because again, um, back to the presentation a while ago, uh, it's so important for our service leaders service team managers to understand how the team is performing, right? And so what we've done is we've built um, a new section here called service results within within your Drift instance and your Drift application. You're gonna be able to see CSAT based on your service team specifically, right? And, and one of the benefits is that we also created a new service agent role. So now within the Drift application, you have distinctions between a marketer or a sales rep and also a service agent. So we can tailor the, the data around that specific specifically, right? So you can see your overall CSAT rating, you can see CSAT um, by by rating in terms of uh, the split of that, as well as very importantly, is CSAT by teammates. Um, this is where we're starting today, but I can tell you we have some really exciting uh, improvements in terms of the reports going in the, in the future, where you know we're pulling in comments and letting letting service managers find conversations that may have gone awry, and you want to inter intervene and uh, use that as a coachable moment, right? Because we're really big on how do we make the data actionable and how do we help service managers help up level their team to to better serve the customer at the end of the day, right? So that's another another piece of that. And then finally here, we also have uh, deflection metrics. And I know for some service leaders, this might be new. Uh, this is something that we're really encouraging service leaders to uh, to take a look into, to invest into. Because again, deflection is really going to be the key in terms of, one, delivering that better customer experience, right? Because again, customers want self-help. How do we do that? And that's through deflection, right? And then two, how do we reduce the burden and reduce the cost for service teams? And again, that is through deflection as well. So this report here is going to show you how your teams, uh, how your bot is performing in terms of deflection uh, for all conversations that are flowing through a certain time period and then also to see your deflection rate based on the playbook as well and what we can do is we can flag the playbooks uh, if they're support or service playbooks and we can measure the deflection rate for each of those so we can drill down to say hey you know maybe this playbook is not performing as well as we want it to and so we can make tweaks and adjustments and tests there as well and then here you have an overall uh, service conversation deflection versus not deflection rate as well and that'll really vary based on you know how you envision your support and service strategy all right and then the final final thing i wanted to also quickly show you guys is um the improvements that we made into the chat itself right so this is this is just the view for for what we call the convo view or the live chat right this is something that your service agents will live in this is something that your sales reps will also live in if you're if you're using drift for sales as well but what we thought was you know how do we make all these conversations uh better organized right and so there's lots of different improvements that are coming out but the ones that are available right now beyond workspaces and inboxes is that now you can create and share sections really easily so if i'm a service manager right and i, I want to go in and build a specific view of conversations for my team i can do that and share it really simply i can do uh use that and i can also share with all the teams that i have access to Right, so I can say my tier two support team. And I also also have, uh, we also introduced a new filter called the waiting to be routed to a teammate filter, which will then let me set a, um, uh, a filter or criteria where it'll show all open conversations that a, that a that a visitor, a site visitor or a customer has been waiting over a certain threshold. And we've allowed that flexibility because some service teams that we've talked to and worked with, you know, they might have a threshold of 90 seconds or another team might have a threshold of 120 seconds. This is up to you guys entirely. So we want to build that flexibly for you. Um, so you can set up the thresholds that adhere to your guidelines and your goals for your service team. And what, once I create this here, what it's going to do is it'll propagate that filter across all of the teammates within that within that team, so they don't have to recreate it as well. Um, so that's just one other thing that we're doing here to help support workflows uh, for different uh, customers, uh, service teams, and service organizations. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my presentation here. Where is it? And I'll. And that's the that's the demo portion. I really want to jump to the questions with you guys, but I think for me it's very personally exciting to work on this because what I think the 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 vision and the value of conversational service is that it isn't a single isolated experience, right? Because when a customer goes to your support channels, they look at your brand as a single entity, right? It's like it's just your brand, right? It's your business. And so how do we how do we at Drift help stitch that customer identity into a single 
identity on in your support channel? And how do we lean on all the different pillars and all the different products that we've already built for Drift, right? So from conversational sales to AI to service, it's, it's all holistic, right? And so I'll leave you with this customer quote here from Dan Amati. Uh, we use Drift to provide differentiated experiences for both customers and prospects, right? We hypothesize that current customers would want to reach out to us to create a support ticket, and we didn't want to misdirect them to our sales team. We realized we could give them options and we can lead with support resources, but also leave the door open for an upsell conversation with sales too. And you can only do that when your chat experience is holistic and it combines the entire customer journey together. And that's why I'm super excited about conversational service. So I'll stop there. And rightly so, Viet. That was a great demo. Uh, folks, we're in the final minutes of our Demo Day webinar. You just heard from product manager Viet Tran about how you folks as customers can use conversational service to alleviate your support teams, personalize your customer care, and strengthen your customer relationships while reducing your costs. So really good stuff. Viet, we had some questions coming in, and we begin with uh, you know, the most popular one, which is how do we get access to yeah. these features? It sounds new, yeah. right? It's like a new sort of yeah, solutions. Yeah. Do I have to buy like a new product here? Uh, so I, uh, I I championed very hard to make this available for premium and up because I felt like it's such core functionality for what Drift has to offer. Uh, I did not want to you know tier it higher. So this is actually available for premium premium plus. So if you're on the new uh, the new plan on premium plus, it is available for you. Uh, you just need seats for your service team, and you can you can get up and running really really fast on this. That's what I also wanted to clarify. It sounds like really access is just, do you want, if you're using premium or above, do you have a service team member that has a seat yet? If yep. not, let's get them the seats. And maybe also that knowledge base set up on the back end. Yep. Sounds like that's another key thing if they want to take advantage of that. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm going to piggyback on some questions some customers asked for the previous uh, two solutions, because I think it matters, is what about the the access control for those particular very service and support centric mm -hmm. agents? I'm sure there's some of our, our customers here have used this for marketing, they've used it for yes. sales, they don't want those new users coming in and accidentally changing yeah. or messing up any playbooks or just getting confused. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we actually built a service agent role that's specific to this. And so service agents have a more limited view within the application. They can't see certain, you know, like a service agent's not going to be able to access your integrations tab, right? They're not going to be able right. to access some of the reporting tabs as well. So uh, the service agent role is very much tailored so that they can operate um, and more tactically in their needs, right? And then you'll also have an admin view or a service manager view, which is going to be completely different because the manager will want to see data in a different way. They'll want to be able to access their teams in a different way. So we've we made those distinctions with the application. Excellent, uh, Viet. So there is just simply one Drift user seat. And what you just described is about the admins or the managers really setting mm -hmm. what that user is going to do, yeah. what type of user it is, yes. and what they have access to, yeah. and how they're using that seat. Yeah. And so final note around access is also if you're an enterprise customer with RBAC, with custom RBAC solution, you can craft the service agent role or the managed role in whatever way you want. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of like which tabs, which windows, which metrics, which, whatever it is, right? So you're going to be able to right. tailor it much more uh, customized. So in, so in the premium, they kind of have a pre-built sort of mm -hmm. role they can toggle, but in yeah. enterprise, they could really get granular as to how they yes. define what a services team member or manager may want to be seeing in Drift. Because it sounds Absolutely. like there is some overlap in these playbooks. The playbook might be for prospects, but mm -hmm. depending on what they say per the AI, per the branch, mm -hmm. they might be going into a ticket situation or a support right. situation. It's really cool how these things come together. Yeah, absolutely. Another question that was asked for AI, and I'm sure some of our customers who haven't used this yet, who now just realize, wow, I could use this like right away. This is in my my Drift instance right now. What services or expertise or support does Drift provide today to these customers who are like, I want to get into conversational service right now? Will mm -hmm. they have help and support from the people they regularly deal with at Drift? Is this something they need to maybe purchase on top of from a professional services standpoint? What can you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm I'm engaged very often with customers. Uh, we work very closely with our customer success team as well as our ProServe team, right? So we, we host um, lots of educational sessions um, where we kind of just help uh, set up customers as well and, and provide best practices and guidance. And so it just really depends on your service strategy and we'll work with you to build what you need, right? And and again, one of the things I, ta I touched on is we, we want this to be uh, an augmentation of your capabilities from a service perspective. We don't want to be an obstacle. We don't want to make, you know, that's why we built the, the, the system to be flexible, right? We want to work with your workflow. Um, that's huge. So I want to just clarify that for our valued customers here on the line. If somebody says, saw what you just showed them, Viet, and is like, mm -hmm. I want that for my organization, they need only kind of raise their hand to their CSM. Yeah. And it sounds like you're really watching this yeah. closely as to which customers yeah. want to roll this out. And you're kind of looking over the shoulders of those CSMs, those customers, make sure that they're using these new features properly. Absolutely. 
Oh, sweet. Well, customers, you really can't lose that in that regard. It's just a matter of deciding, do we want to try this? Do we want to explore this? And being vocal via email or what have you to your CSM so that uh, Vietnam's team can make sure that you're set up for success in these features, which likely the majority of you may already have available in your instances as we speak. It's pretty powerful Absolutely. for no additional cost. Uh, there were a couple of tactical questions that popped up, Viet, as you were going. They want to just check sure. on transcripts. I'm assuming they meant chat transcripts. Are yep. those also available in Salesforce yes. uh, for this? Yeah, absolutely. So transcripts will be automatically attached directly to the Salesforce case. So for example, it was very important for us to support workflows where you had a uh, a team that was handling support asynchronously in chat in, in cases, right? Our ticket management system team. So those teams needed context of the conversation, right? It's very hard to jump into a ticket and not have the context of the conversation. For so sure. We automate the the the, the attachment of uh, of the full drift transcript directly into Salesforce as well with the case. Excellent, Matt, a customer on the line had asked. Speaking of integrations and stuff, will there is there or will there be an integration with ServiceNow? Um, ServiceNow is something that we've discussed in the past. We don't yet have that support right now. Doesn't mean we rule out entirely, but we do support uh, Zendesk again, uh, Salesforce, and uh, some support email flows as well. But it sounds like Viet that customers who are interested in adopting conversational service powered mm -hmm. on drift should sim quite simply be vocal about their want to, to their desire to do yeah. that and that you're providing a lot of attention to those customers that are interested about where the gaps are and, and so on so they just should just be vocal on i want to try this there might be a couple obstacles here but i want yeah. to talk to viet and the team about it yeah i think i think the thing that i'll impress on everyone here is that again this is going to be the way for you to create a singular chat experience for your customers from that prospecting stage through the sales cycle through the existing customers right and i think that's why it's so powerful so um yeah i'd love to talk to any customers on you know we can we can dive into the product roadmap as well very happy to Excellent, excellent, Via. Thank you so much to all three of our product managers who came and talked about the three solutions that are available to Drift customers today, uh, conversational sales, conversational AI, and conversational service. As our producer Delaney just said, the poll is live. We'd love to know how you thought we did with the conversational service demo. And I believe it's pinned right to the top of your chat here of Drift customers that you can go to our community and start the conversation there. Uh, Viet, you and your, your fellow product managers are looking at these these threads and what the customers are asking about or commenting on yes absolutely all right well folks that concludes our program how do you think you did viet on uh, closing out i know you were a little nervous to be the <laughs> final session but i think you did okay right i think i just got excited i'm so i'm actually kind of glad because I, I i just trying to build up energy off of josh and, and i'm assuming I, I think the thing is again we're building on top of this platform that's holistic right and that's that's the whole value prop that we have here at drift so i'm just excited to be part of it thank you guys totally totally and thank you all to our customers your great questions great feedback it just gets us excited to know that we're dealing with uh, actual customers and users of the product so appreciate you folks coming today and remember be vocal early and often to your csm if you heard or saw anything here that you said i want that to work for us let your csm know we want it to work for you too all right so thanks everybody for coming thanks once again to our three uh, product managers spending time with us today and we'll see you on our next product demo day webinar have a great rest of your afternoon thank you